Hello, hello, and welcome to The Real with Rachel, where I'm Rachel Smith, a local real estate agent in the Maryland area with Remax, and I'm so ecstatic to have a special guest on today, Wayne Six with Six & Associates Appraisals. Yay! Yeah, we gotta do the clap, we gotta interject that. Hi, Wayne. Hi. Hi, thank you for coming on my show today. I'm so excited. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, so, Give me the background on you. You've been an appraiser, a licensed appraiser, for how long and in what areas do you typically cover? Okay. Well, I've been an appraiser since 1980, but appraisers did not have to be licensed until 1991. So I've been licensed for 29 years. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. But doing it for over 39, almost 40. 39 yeah. years now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's it's incredible. All I've, all I've done since college. That's awesome. And I really enjoy it. It seems like you might enjoy it, and it seems that you've kind of made a name for yourself in this area, primarily Frederick areas where you like to Yeah, we, pr we only your... do Frederick. Okay. We only do Frederick. I've been helping out a little bit over in Washington County. One of the ladies on the okay. PA panel got sick over there, and they asked me if I would pick up a little bit. So I've been going over there a little bit, not much. Interesting. We have plenty right here in Frederick. Right? Tell me about it. We're although... going to do, do about 2,600 appraisals this year. Are you serious? Yeah. 2,600? Yeah. How do you have time to do all that? Yeah, right now we're at uh, uh, How many 2469 are... right now. How many people are on your staff? We have seven appraisers, and I have two full-time secretaries that have been with me a long time. Yeah, I know, one of them's fabulous. I love her, Tammy. Oh, yeah, yeah they're, both, they're both been with me. One's been with me 28 years, one's been with me 33 years. Oh, my gosh. Well, obviously they love you, so mm -hmm. there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. So, of course, I want to jump right into it, and uh, the burning question of the day, sir, is going to be, what is the market doing currently, and then what your predictions are for 2021? So, give me the rundown. Give me okay. your thoughts. Okay. I have a pretty good handle on it, because we're out there every day in it. Um, when, when the virus hit in March, we were all worried to death that we knew that people weren't going to want... Uh, Sellers weren't going to want people coming through their house, and we just saw the whole market just clamming up. Yeah. But the virus has actually made the market go wild. Yeah. It's what it's done. It's crazy. It's what it's done. I didn't predict that. I, no, I, oh, I, I didn't either. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I. I knew it was going to affect inventory, mm -hmm. and that's that's what it's done. What, in in Frederick County. Um, this time of year, there should be about eleven to twelve hundred homes for sale. Correct. I think think of the market as a seesaw. Okay, um, eleven to twelve hundred. There's no advantage to the buyer or the seller. It's you know it's perfect. It's a perfect teeter totter. Yeah, it's 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 good. Now it's like this. I know. <laughs> it's totally it's in favor of the seller Sellers. because. Instead of 11 to 1,200 homes for sale, and this is fresh, this is data, at, we run this data every Monday, so this is yesterday's data. Okay, okay. Um, yesterday there were 365 homes for sale in Frederick County, yeah. No, it's it's It's, it's about scary. a third of what we should have. So it doesn't matter whether you're selling real estate or automobiles or books or whatever, when you have a limited supply and a heavy demand Man. that... Well, it's caused the prices to go crazy this year a, a lot. I mean, we're seeing, um, here's an example. I wanted to save this one for you. Here's one I did last week. It's a it's a condo out on Hopewell in Newmarket. And okay. the people bought it in January Okay. for 308 Now they're going to have a baby, so they decided to buy a townhouse. Okay. Because uh, it was only a two-bedroom two, two condo. Okay. Yeah, and um, it's under contract for 335 So... They made nine. It went up nine percent in ten months, which is about eleven percent annual appreciation. About eleven percent. Wow! Okay. And that's a condo, may I add? That's a condo. Well, yeah, and has more well, of a control on value increase. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. One thing you will see though is the lower priced homes tend to go up a, at a faster rate than the uh, a four hundred thousand dollar house is going to go up more Appreciate on it. a percent basis than a eight or nine hundred thousand. Just because of the, the demand, the demand for the, that. There's more buyers in that price bracket versus yeah. an eight or nine. I did a home this morning in Lake Linganore that went on the market at three thirty-five. No, three forty-five. It's under contract for three seventy. It's under contract for twenty-five thousand more than this. Yes. Yes, and I, I have clients, multiple clients that have gone that high. In fact, all of my transactions that I have under contract right now representing buyers, they've gone over a list. Oh, I'd say it's, it's at least 
two thirds yeah. go to above list. Yeah, you know. You have to or you're not going to get that. You house. have to or you're not going to get it. And then, of course, waiving contingencies and things of that nature. But it's funny to kind of hear that firsthand from an appraiser that that is what's happening <laughs> out there in the streets yeah. right now. Hey, hey, that's what's happening until the bad guys like us come along and we have a lot of Trump them that it. don't appraise. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them don't, don't appraise. They don't, you know. But you got to look at the definition of market value. You yes. Know, look at the definition. It says a supportable estimate of value. And I mean, every job we get in, if for whatever neighborhood, it's, you know, if they're all selling for worse, if all my comps are at 400, this one's going to be 415. If it's 300, this one's going to be 315. It's like going up a set of steps and yes. every, every, the next yes. step, the next sale, you're going up another, another. step, another, but, but you can't jump the whole exactly. flight. Some of these realtors trying to jump the whole flight like, of steps. Yep. It's like, uh, so, you know, Santa comes uh, in like four weeks, not, 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 <laughs> not today. <laughs> So, um, That's a good way to put it, though, you know, with the well, steps. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we're supposed to do, you just do what's honest, and you got to protect the, the buyer, you do. too. And they get all emotional, and they, especially if they've lost a house or two, they're willing to pay anything to get it. Yeah, and and it's, yeah. it's just, it's, I don't want to say it's stupid, but it's, it's we do have a lot of them that don't. We've had, oh, I think we had three last week that didn't appraise. Really? You but know. then at that point, you go back to renegotiate, and there's only so high that, um, um, you know, the market will dictate and yeah. i think that's what makes your job so important is that we're not going to have something that kind of reverts back to 04 05 06 where yeah. people they're just handing things out like water so now i think having more control over that yeah value and, and, and pushing buyers, back are, buyers are smart uh we did a house the second house we did today they listed it at 329 and it's like hello it's never gone nobody no no buyer is going to pay it. No matter how crazy the market is, nobody's going to pay that. And it's under contract for two eighty. And, and they that's what it was listed at three. Yeah, no, no, no. They three twenty nine is what it's listed. Right, and it's under contract for two eighty, which is where it should be. Okay. Because okay. that buyer had seen enough houses to, to know, know that the number didn't start with a three, and they knew it, and they offered it, and they were able. To are you seeing contracts where buyers are willing to pay cash over, like a cash difference yes. in appraisals? Yes, yes, yes. Are you yes, seeing yes. that more frequently? Because oh, I've written you, a few. Oh, 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 great question. I'll tell you where I'm really seeing it is in new construction in, in the subdivisions. Oh, wow. I just did one down at New Market where... New Market's booming. The, oh, it is. The, the, the buyer was taking out so many options. I mean, they had like $170,000 worth of options, all these little penny any options that cost, you know, one of the first rules in my business is cost does not equal value. And they're adding all these ticky-tack things on and the realtor knew it wasn't going to appraise. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. said, look, once you hit this price, any other options you got to pay in, in, in cash. cash. Because they had me come in and tell them, what it was going to appraise for, which was 15000 less than what their contract was already. So they had to go back, take out what they wanted to take out, and then anything above, oh they're going to pay in cash. in cash. But that's the realtor being smart. That That's that's cutting something off before it happens. Correct. And I'm all for Saving that. Saving the transaction and, and being wise about moving forward. Yeah. Now, with that said, you mentioned something about um, the cost approach and market value, right? Yeah, what cost is, and value. Mm -hmm. Correct. So there's two different ways that you can typically look at an appraisal, right? I've seen that, I think, in a couple different fashions where you do the cost approach. Can you explain oh, we always the do. difference? We do cost approach on everything. Is that what you do mm -hmm. typically? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, because I see two different you know, not real good on languages when yeah. you see it there. So it's just kind of yeah. cool to, to get your feedback as to how you Yeah, it's a little different it. when it's a multifamily building and okay. you're doing one unit in there, the cost approach isn't this. But I love, oh, I love the cost approach. Okay. A lot of appraisers don't, but I love it. Yeah, that's why I want to When you get in a hard, when you get in one that's really hard and you don't know how much to do for buildings and everything, believe me. You go back to what it would oh, cost. Oh, the cost approach is, oh, I love, I love the cost <laughs> approach. I really do. I really do. It's there no, when you need it, you know? Yeah, so that's something to fall back on. Good, because I was I was more curious as to if you like to utilize that that I avenue. I do. So very interesting. So typically, when a buyer is purchasing a home, right? So you go through drafting an offer, which can become a contract, and you're going to get with your lender and start working on your finances. Um, as you're scrolling through that through processing, at some point after inspections, if we're still a go, you're going to go ahead and have your lender order an appraisal, and typically that's done by like a third party portal, right? So a yes, lender will click correct. a button, mm -hmm. goes yep. out to a portal. Yep. You can decide whether or not you want to pick it up and that's take correct. on that appraisal, mm -hmm. and then at that point. 
how long is the turnaround time typically that you're seeing now currently in this market? Because I feel like sometimes people don't believe me when we're like, we're all backed up, everybody's slow. But it's uh, it's taken a while, right? Because everybody's slammed. Yeah, but we're turning stuff pretty you're turning quick. You're stuff? We, I can turn stuff probably, definitely within two weeks. Two weeks is the typical? Within two weeks. Yeah, my VAs I have to have back in 10 days. Yeah, because they do have like a time limit on mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they have. Yeah. But it's, you know, we work hard. We work a lot of hours, so it's not, uh, yeah, I see that. it's not, uh, and I have this staff to do, I mean, we, the manpower yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, if we do 2,700 this year, we, last year we did 2,323. So you've already over your last year? Oh, yeah, yeah, That's we passed incredible. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. I haven't done 2,700 appraisals since. 2003 and 2004 both of those years see that's why i was asking earlier if we feel like you know those values if we're seeing some type of insight from that time frame of the 0405 bubble well but yeah, you but what's yeah, your but, opinion yeah but, oh, yeah, but, yeah, but here you got to think about this now you gotta you gotta analyze this in from june of 01 until June of 05, a period of four years, property values went up 20% a year or 80% in four years, okay? We're not gonna, with what's going on now, we're not gonna see that. Yeah, we just saw 11% for this year. It, in June of 05, the market crashed, okay? In June of 05, there were 390 houses for sale in Frederick County. In November of 2008, there were 2,200 homes for sale in Frederick County. That, that, we went from this to this, okay? So, so then, then, that was a buyer's market because there were so many houses for sale. So what happened, see, the market went down from June of 05 until the end of 2010, and it went down about 35%. Well, it had gone up. No, it's not. It had gone up eighty percent. That it had gone, that's. I don't like that. I don't. Yeah, I, 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 I like this. I don't like this yeah, and this. Yeah, yeah. This and this is not healthy. Yeah. Because at the end of 2010, 50 percent of the sales, and I got all this. I do a ton of court court work, although I haven't been doing much this year with the courts closed. Yeah. But um, um. No, I lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, I know what it was. At the end of 2010, 50 percent of the sales in Frederick County were. Short sales and foreclosures, fifty percent. Oh, believe me, I got the That's data. So sad. I got all oh, it is. But but what happened? It went up so fast. So we're not there now. So okay, don't good. don't. Keep, I, keep I, comforting I, me. Well, I'm not trying. I'm not. Because <laughs> I want to make sure. Yeah, I don't have any BS. I tell the truth. I'm I not going to make you feel, say something just to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. um, it is it's a good time truth. to buy a house because interest rates are so low. Yeah, I mean, I just did a VA. They got two point seven five. Um, we, in, in a lot of areas, we're still not quite back up to where we were in June of 05, and that was 15 years ago, because the market dropped 35% till the end of 2010. Then it turned flat. People forget there's three markets, up market, down market, flat market. It goes up, then it turns flat, then it comes down, then it turns flat, then it goes back up. Everybody wants to forget. They just think up, down, up, down. They forget the flat market. Interesting. Uh, yeah. 2010, at the end of 2010, we, we hit the bottom. Then we were flat for about four years. In 2014, prices started to go back up at about 4% a year, which was really nice. Oh my gosh, nice, gentle. Even, you know, it's, yeah. like, it's like cruising down the highway with a nice, you know, just a nice speed. Cruise now we're, now the market's going crazy. We're going 120 <laughs> miles an hour now. We're gonna, we're, so, but we haven't been in this long enough to have a big crash. Okay. And the appreciation rate's only been about 11%. And it's not 20% a year for four years, right, we saw it. where it's totally crazy. Yeah. Um, it's still a good time to buy, and I'm not saying that to no, promote no. anything, but do it's still a no good time. Interest that? rates are so low. I mean, it's a really they good. Why do, you think, why do you think you're getting all these bids? I saw two and a half yesterday for one of my clients. Two and a half? Wow. Two and a half. See, yes. I haven't seen that in 39 years. It's insane. I haven't seen anything like that. Yeah. I have seen three crashes where the market went up and peaked and came down. I've seen that so three times. See. Yeah, yeah, the early 90s was one, and the uh, um, and very early 80s was because interest rates went so high. high. Interest rates really control things, too. But um, only I feel pretty good about where the market is right okay, now. Okay, because that, that's what I was hoping you would say. But 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 here's what's going to happen. You asked me to predict the future. I, I did. This Where's your pretty, crystal ball? Well, I don't need one. It's pretty <laughs> easy to see what's going to happen. Um, I think... This is what I think is going to happen. I think they're, the vaccine is going to come out. That's my next question. And when the vaccine, the news this morning, they're talking like in three weeks, the vaccine. Yeah. Once the vaccine's out, 
and the, the, once the virus starts to go away, yeah, go away, more people will put their home back on the market, and then we'll get back into a more normal okay. balance. I probably by the, by the by the summer, I think we'll see, and then people are going to say, "Okay, now let's go ahead and move." Don't now. feel a little yeah, more yeah. comfortable. Yeah, we talked about going to South Carolina. Let's go ahead and do it. So, I think I think this was just like a one year. If you're graphing, if you're graphing, it's going to be a gradual uptick, then a high uptick, but then it's going to go back to a gradual. I don't like you were saying that cruise control speed. Yes, on the highway. and that's what I want to go back to. Same. Because Same. with this craziness, you can't have. I mean, people's income don't go up ten percent, eleven percent not. a year. At least mine didn't. So um, you, 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 you're just asking to get punched in the face with that. So. It, but it's only been for one year and it was only 11%. So it's not going to be like last time. Because okay. people are freaking that it's going to be like last time. And it's got similar, similar signs, signs but, but it's not the same. Okay. okay. That's, that's refreshing to hear. So yeah. thank you. Thank well, you. I appreciate well, I'm not, that. I'm not trying to. I know. I mean, I just, I can, <laughs> it's easy to, after you do this stuff for a while, it's easy to, you know, it's yeah, like going to the doctor and he looks you over a little bit. And he, he already knows what you have, but he'll run the test. He'll run the he, test. But you can to, tell just by... You can, obviously, you're that person. You're that type of doctor. Well, that you've got the experience. Only, only you've seen I've it all. It for, you know, it's not, I'm not a genius or anything. Just because yeah. I've been doing it for so long. It's the experience. Yeah. So here's one of my burning questions. Okay. What's your thoughts on Zestimates from Zest Zillow? The oh, Zestimates. God. Oh, Zestimates. Well, <laughs> they're all over the place. All over the place. I think one of the houses that we did yesterday, I think they used Zillow because they way <laughs> underpriced the damn thing. And it ended up, I think that was 25,000 over the list because oh, wow. it, Zillow's all over the place. It really is. Well, you got to remember, uh, just like the assessment office, they don't go in the house. They don't go in your house. So, they don't know what you've done, your upgrades right. or anything And else. condition can be uh, at, least a, at least 10, sometimes 15% difference depending upon condition well they don't even go out to the house they just know that it was built 25 years ago and they go on square footage and yep. so much for the lot and all this yep. they don't go in the house yeah, uh, it, when it was built if the basement wasn't finished they don't know if the basement's finished now so Zillow is all over the place all over the place Zillow I will give them a little credit Zillow is good on cookie cutter houses where you have all those houses that are the same. Yeah, paint your door green so you know which one's yours when you go home at night. Those kind of houses, Zillow's pretty good. But on other houses, Zillow's all over the place. Yeah, especially custom or... Yeah, oh yeah, custom or a little, little uniqueness, something yeah. like that, or with acreage or good. buildings. That, that kind of reiterates my feeling to a degree on Zillow. It's kind of a love-hate relationship. Well, they're high. I think the, they miss as many high as they do low. You yeah. Know, the county assessment office, I did a... Um, I used to do a, 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 a monthly newsletter called Wayne's World, and 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 it, and we did, ah, I did I one oh, I did one one month that was um, how close are assessed values to sale values, and we took a ton of data from one year of the houses that sold, and then I had the secretaries take all the sales prices and do all the assessment values, and in general, if you multiply by like 1.15. It, it would get you there in general Jeez. about multiply by 1.15 times your assessment and that gets you pretty that gets that's, you pretty that's close kind of, that's, that's valuable information because yeah, i think yeah. a lot of people do try and gauge their value based on their tax assessment and yeah, i try and convey yeah. to them that's not completely yeah. accurate yeah no but the, and the, the exception there too would be if you have a lot of land usually they have the land way too low, too low. and older houses they have much lower, lower if it's yeah. an old house or if it has acreage don't use the 1.15. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Well, that's just a, yeah. I'm a numbers guy and I, and I, I was just curious to see what it was. Yeah, I'm glad that you did do that research because that kind of can help me go back to my clients when they try and say something about the tax assessment that, hey, you know, that that's not accurate. The best thing to do if you can't have an, you know, an appraisal mm -hmm. right off the bat, then yeah. obviously your comps and your CMA. And that's a general, say, what I just said is a very general. general. <laughs> it took and the, that's this it area, took, right? It took Let's the ones that, that are, it the ones that are occasionally we'll even see assessments that are a little high, but lots of times Zillow is too high though. Zillow, yeah. yeah Zillow is just all over. They remind me of a, 
Oh, they remind me of a kid that can't drive. They're just all over the place. <laughs> That's Zillow. I mean, it is. Mm -hmm. the ping pongs, it, it can definitely hurt too. And it's sad because consumers really put a lot of weight and value on those consumer websites that just... Yeah, but you got to realize that people don't, they don't go in the house. Know. They don't, they know, don't know, know a lot about the house. They don't know the condition. Nope, not you at know? all. They don't not know. All. all right, so when you're going out to do an appraisal, whether it's, you know, pre-listing, through a lender, or anything else, mm -hmm. does it help when sellers bake cookies uh, no. <laughs> no. sorry I, I hate the bust your bubble burst your bubble but uh there's I, your answer I, kids I, I, what, what was the question does it help with the seller make there's cookies? your answer uh, that, does it help that, when they bake cookies that's what everybody always says you see it like on some of these articles like no. bake cookies so it smells nice and i'm no, like that's for the buyer. come that's on for the buyer. no that's i've seen it for us. the appraisers for the too no. okay so next burning question that's pools Pools. Yeah, all I can tell you, I'm not pools. Tell me your opinion on if they really hold value to what they would spend on installing a pool. Do you, do you see a return on that? What is your input well, on pools? Yeah, oh, sure. I see that all the time. Okay. Um, a pool is not a good investment. Uh, sorry. I mean, I have a pool. There you go, kids. I have a pool, but pool is, <laughs> you know, you're like 20 cents on the dollar or something. Yep. Now I see yep. people put in an $80,000 pool and they get 20,000 yeah. back. So, and especially I've seen some, a couple real clunkers where they're in a neighborhood where they're paying an HOA that includes a pool and then they put, I said, like Linganore, you're, you're paying for the community pool and then you put a pool in your backyard, it's like, duh, yeah. I mean, that's, wow. duh. but a pool is value to the user. Correct. Okay. And it helps with this. Yeah, I mean, I have aspect. a pool. I love it. My grandkids, we we, 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 we enjoy our pool. So, you, but it's, is it a good investment? No, okay. no. It's not like carpet or paint or a new kitchen or bath or something it's like that. Weight and value, Pool's yeah. about 20 cents on the dollar in general. Good. Interesting to know. So now I'm seeing I a lot of saltwater pools. That. I'd say 50% of the pools I'm seeing built new are saltwater. Yeah, I've got one that's coming up that's a saltwater pool and, so and just really kind nice. of a re so I'm gonna point the right them to the video. Of, my buddy Burton builds pools. You you need to put the right type of plumbing in. Interesting. And Do if you, you take an old pool and convert it to salt, you gotta be careful because it's a lot of it has is to do with the plumbing. Is yes. salt water you think more valuable than a chlorine chemical? If you had to choose? Uh I would say yeah. By a little but not much. Okay. Mm -hmm. By a little but not much. Next question is what's the most difficult item to give value to? The most difficult item? Like that you've seen, for example, um, like a home theater or if someone has something really unique, like marble floors, gold pillars, something of that uh, caliber. That's anything that's super unique and out of the box doesn't get, isn't going to get, you know, you know, because most buyers aren't going to want to be willing to pay for that. Correct. That's the, that's the question you need to ask yourself. Is a buyer going to want, is a buyer going to be willing to pay for this option? So. Usually we try and market to the biggest pool of buyers, right? So mm -hmm. sure. having something unique will narrow that pool of buyers. Yeah, and, and you know, it's like a tennis court. I mean, most people don't want a tennis court, and they're not going to pay for a tennis you know, Anything too unique. Too unique is going to And I see people that go too crazy in their house with colors and too much wallpaper. You know. The wallpaper. Although we've seen wallpaper make a comeback. However. Wallpaper is starting to come back yeah. a little, but boy, you can overdo it. You really oh, can. Very gosh. easily, too. Very easily. What's the craziest thing you've seen? In wallpaper? Like, no, just in, in going through people's houses in your almost 40 years of doing this, what is Crazy? the craziest thing that you've seen? It's oh, like, oh gosh, I'd have to think about that. Oh, I've seen some, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I, I can't tell you right now. I'm going to have to think <laughs> we'll about that one. Back. I've seen some, oh, I have, we will, I, I, I've seen some weird things though. Have some you? weird things. Yeah, like sometimes it's almost like, I don't want to know what that's for. <laughs> <laughs> can, you re can you remove that before we take pictures, yeah, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, trust me. I understand. I, I, okay, I, I, I'll tell you. I you got one? Yeah. I did a big house, and it had an enema room where the lady had a table and gave herself an enema every day. She was like a health freak and whatever i have so. to think on my reaction for that okay <laughs> <laughs> let, let, hey, you asked me. let me you asked the think question. how i, I should I react because i've got a couple different things that are <laughs> but i like that but i wasn't expecting that 
Nice. Yeah, I could probably I think. think of a couple other weird things. Kind of. Go ahead. Um, all right. So I, I was thinking about this because it comes up into play, especially in this market. Do you get pissed off when people challenge your values? Have you ever had someone challenge your values and you're like, oh, sure. son of a gun, what's this oh, person doing? Time. Like, what's your what's your reaction? Okay. Well, my reaction is I don't get I don't get angry. Okay. No, not okay. at all. Not at all. Um, uh, we get appeals where realtors yeah, will appeal and say we think that you're. Too, that you're too low, and I go, okay, fine. Send me some Wait, data yeah. to support why you think that. And I mean, I'm an open person. I'll look at it. I like that. I appreciate. I that. just had one on South Street that I changed. Really? We, yeah. I brought it in like five grand low, and there were two other units that were under contract that this this particular agent was from a large office. And she got the information on these two under contract and sent me the contracts. Wonderful. And I looked it over and I'm like, she's right. So That's enlightening to hear. I appreciate you sharing that. Well, yeah. Some, some get... appraisers think, you know, they, yeah. hey, this is the way it is and I'm the boss. And you, know, you, you can't have an attitude like that. I appreciate you sharing that. You got to be that. open. You got to be open. I'm, I'm open. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm open. Hit me with your best shot. Show me what you have. I'm, I'm willing to look. Because that doesn't mean I'm going to change it. Change but, it, but hey, yeah. while well, oh, entertaining. Lots of times the stuff they send me is like, oh, good lord. <laughs> That's no, not yeah, happening. That doesn't work. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you like it when, with that said, do you appreciate or like or prefer when an agent provides documentation up front before an appraisal? Well, or are you more of, hey, let me do my thing, and if I need you, I'll yeah, reach out? Well, I would say in general, it's probably not a bad idea to do that. But in our case, we do a lot of appraisals and we only do Frederick County. I don't, you know, sometimes I go to these meetings and the appraisers will brag about how many counties and states they appraise in and all this stuff. I just do Frederick. Yeah, so, the same in four county. Yeah, I like yeah. To. I mean, we have our data and uh, shoot, I'd say on most of the jobs we've done, I'd say probably at least a third of the houses we've done ourselves. So we know a lot about them so, on the data. <laughs> so know. yeah, but, but like the house we did this morning, the realtor just sent some comps over, and that's fine. We'll look at them. We'll, we're going to do all our job I first. Mean, gonna we're going to do our job anyway. just like we didn't have that. We're going to you know, put a blinder up and say, and then we're going to do our whole job, and then we're going to go, okay, let's see what they sent us. And lots of times what they sent us and what we have it's are mimicking. similar. But they might have something that's that I didn't get for some reason or something. Like, like for example, like you said on the South Street one where there's someone mm -hmm. or contract that haven't yeah. been published in the MLS yet. So to have that information pooled from that listing agent is valuable as well. It's very yeah. important to have good, fresh data because we've we, last week we saw it twice. We were in neighborhoods. We were in small neighborhoods where we had... Three sales, I like to put five comps on. You only got to put three on. We always, everybody in here knows, we, we're going to put five comps on. Like we always put five on, yeah, yeah. Okay. And if your range is still pretty wide, we'll go ahead and put two more on or something. Just, it's like shooting at a target. You want to keep shooting until you feel like you're, you're hitting, hitting where you want it, where, where it should be. So, um, now I lost my train of thought again. Um, the multiple. The listings or you'll use multiple comparables to yeah 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 so well. what i was going to say we saw last week was we wanted to put the five on we had three real recent ones and then the other two we had to go back to like uh one was from february and march yeah, yeah. That, Norm that time i know like, and when you put those two from uh, february and march even doing even doing we were doing eight percent doing eight percent they're still comping out low. low that yep. shows you what I'm trying to tell you is that shows you how much the market has changed. Yeah, it's like it went up a bunch of steps at one time. At one time, it just jumped. It yeah. did. It, it jumped. reminds me of it you jumped. say the steps like the kid jumping off the steps, you know? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's, you know, it's refreshing to hear that there's some pumpage of the brakes there because I, I do, I don't think anybody wants to see anything that reverts back to before in the bubble. So mm -hmm. it's nice to hear that reiteration of information that you know, don't jump, it's not, we're not going to see a 20%, we're going to stay within that bracket that you had said, the 11 to... 11, about 11 is... Yeah, 11-ish, yeah. so no, 11 that's always good to know. I think that's it. Okay. I, I feel like I just gained so much knowledge. <laughs> So thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate your time. Um, you also do pre-listing appraisals as well, correct? So if a seller wasn't feeling too great and yeah, confident. Yeah, we have been. It's been so busy for about the last month and a half. We haven't been taking, taking them on. only because 
it's taking everything we have going just as fast as we here. can to keep up with uh, with all the sales. But now the holidays are starting to come up, you'll see things start to slow, slow back down, down a yeah. little bit. Yeah, so we're taking some we're taking some pre-sales because okay. sometimes I'll get a seller or a call and they say, "No, I had three agents out. Well, one said six hundred, one said six thirty, and one said six seventy-five. So I don't know where yeah. I." want to be uh, and that's that one we just did yeah that was telling you about they listed it at like 329 it's like hello a 10th grader a 10 year old can tell you that's not the right <laughs> price but you know what they did is they sat on the market drop 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 that house started to get shelf life and yes. they ended up selling it for less. They sell themselves for two eighty. They yep. ended up selling it for two eighty. If they would have just listed, listed it, it at three hundred, yeah, two ninety at two ninety nine, they would have yep. gotten two ninety. It's Correct. like because you know, then you just shot stigma. yourself. You just shot yourself in the yep. foot by overpricing. Yep, and, and then I'm you're, you're selling now. yourself short. Yeah, where you could have obtained that three hundred, but because mm -hmm. you were feeling a little too frisky, right. you decided to overprice it, and now it gets that stigma from being on the market more than thirty days. Even thirty days on the market right now, oh, buyers are like, "What do you mean thirty days? Life, what do you mean thirty days? Why isn't this gone in one week or twenty? Yeah. You know?" And mm -hmm. so that creates that negative. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. So that's something, another valuable tool that I'll have to utilize when doing my listing appointments. And if there are people that are very um, curious and just not feeling comfortable about their specific listing price, then I can always direct them to you guys yeah. to do yeah, a we're pre, start, we'll, now <laughs> pre, pre appraisal. Up, we'll, we'll do some. Yeah, we couldn't take them for a while, but right yeah. now. Yeah, right now we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown, breathing a little bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it'll be good. But well, Thank you so much You're for welcome. coming on and letting me pick your brain. I appreciate it. And for everybody that's watching, I will link his website below so that if you guys wanted to do a pre-appraisal or have any questions pertaining to appraisals, you can reach out to this fabulous celebrity in my eyes right here, Wade Six from Six and Associates. So thank you so much for joining us and we will catch you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>